Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Welcome to on this Resurrection Sunday. Uh, it's you know we, we're we're glad that you are here and wherever you are, Christ is risen among us. Uh, I was you know talking with uh, Terry earlier that you know for us uh, believers and it's more appropriate to to greet one another, saying Christ is risen. As you know, the term Easter is really a, a, a pagan goddess's name, uh, celebrating the goddess Easter. So every time you, you invoke the name of a goddess, pagan goddess, that it's kind of inappropriate for us to greet one another that way. So we celebrate the resurrection of Christ on this, on this Sunday. So let us come, for Christ is risen indeed. Friends, let us join our hearts and our minds for the resurrection and the, and the worship of God. Please join me for the call to worship. Look, a silver of light across the horizon. The miracle of a new day. See, the stone is rolled away and the angel calls from within. Feel. Feel the freedom of our souls and the wonder of the Messiah's gifts of new life. Hear the hallelujah as we declare to the world, He has risen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us join our hearts for the opening prayer. Infinite God, your light breaks forth like the dawn. Scatter the darkness and renew our hope. You are our joy and our life, the wellspring of our praise, the font of all our hallelujah. All glory and honor to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 245, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. All creation joined to say. Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. Boards the fight, the battle won, In faith, forbid to him rise. Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise. Alleluia. Life's again, thou glorious King. Now you're staying, Alleluia. Jesus died, thou so to say, 
Friends, Jesus is rising from the dead, assures us that we too have been given a new life. Let us then repent of our sins before God and one another, certain of God's mercy through his resurrection and a new life to come. Let us join our hearts for the prayer of confession. All-knowing, all-powerful God, we confess that even on this most holy day, we are unable to believe in the victory over death shown to us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We confess our utter dependence on your, not only for life, but also for faith, hope, and love. Forgive us and transform us that in every way our work and prayer will make whole what is broken and give peace on earth. Amen. Friends, by the grace of God and the witness of those who came before us, the good news of Jesus' resurrection is that he is our rock and our salvation. We shall no longer die and live. The rejected stone the cornerstone has now become our strength and our song. In the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of his resurrection, our sins have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Friends, the resurrected Christ has come into our lives by offering us peace in the midst of chaos and turbulence. Let us then share this peace of Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with our brothers and sisters in Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us and also be with you. Let us now turn to our neighbor and exchange and share signs of peace to one another. So it's good to see some old, not old, but familiar faces. <laughs> Elder is here and May is here with us. So uh, please, you know, do continue this time of, you know, exchange and greeting, and so we're glad that you're here. Our first scripture reading this morning, uh, it's a tr traditional uh, resurrection text. Uh, as you know, the story of resurrection is recorded in all four Gospels, and uh, this year, we, it's using the, uh, the lectionary uh, from uh, the Gospel of John, okay? Uh, 
The John passage is one of the more detailed uh, descriptions, and I'll, yeah, I'll say a little bit more about that. Uh, there are actually two parts of this passage. One focuses more on the disciples. Uh, you have Peter and the unnamed disciple, which is presumably John. Um, and then the second half deals with Mary, Mary the Matter, Mary from Mary Matter. So let us now hear the resurrection recording according to John. Chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying on the linen wrappings, but rolling up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. Verse 11. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. Then they said to her, Women, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around, and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go, Go to my brothers and, and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Mary Madeline went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Acts, chapter 10, verse 34 to 43. Acts, as you know, is written by the disciple uh, Luke. It's a continuation of the Luke Gospel. Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. 
Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him on They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. Bear with me for a moment, please. The story of the resurrection never gets old. Even though each year we come on Resurrection Sunday and read the same passage, or almost identical passage, every year. Whichever gospel versions that you may read from, It's always this high, intense drama filled with much suspense, tension, excitement, even disappointment, and hope. Even though this story was more than 2,000 years old, it is worth retelling or rereading every time because it, it inspires our faith. Every time we read it, we might see something different, that the Spirit may speak to us in a renewed way. And as we read earlier from the John's account of the resurrection story, we came upon Mary Madeline arriving early at the tomb along with other women, other women at the body of Jesus where, where he was laid. Unlike the Luke account, uh, it's more, the Luke's account is more descriptive, telling that there were more other women along with Mary Madeline. Uh, here, the John version is very subtle because they said we, so assuming Mary Madeline was not alone. But it wasn't mentioned about the other women. Most likely, Mary was very much traumatized, frightened, by what took place within the last 36 or 40 hours. Seeing her beloved teacher taking his last breath on the cross and having his body taken and and, and buried in the tomb as she was about to come and embalm uh, his body to 
preserve the body a little longer. But she had no idea what to expect as she arrived at the tomb on that resurrection morning. According to John, Mary, as, as Mary approached the tomb, she saw from a distance that the stone had rolled out already. Her initial reaction that someone else had taken Jesus' body. But who? Who would have done that and why? All frightened, terrified, and probably confused, the women ran as quickly as possible to report to the other disciples. Here, Peter's, the, the, Peter's name was mentioned, and, and John, the writer of the, the, of the gospel, was, didn't identify himself, but it was assumed that it was he, him as well. Peter and, and, and John were mentioned, and, and they too ran quickly to the tomb, just wanted to see it for themselves. They needed to see it before their eyes in order to believe. Chances are that you and I would probably have done the same, would have done the same thing. That we want to check it out. Make sure that, you know, this person is not saying something, maybe she's hallucinating. Both Peter and the unnamed disciple, John, arrived at the empty tomb. And they saw the linen wrapping inside the tomb. There was no body. But what I found intriguing this time around as I was as we were reading rereading this story is on verse verses eight and nine. Look at that again. That the disciples went in and they saw the body was gone. But it says that they did not understand. They did not understand what this is all mean. They recognize that, yes, the body is not there. That's the fact. But where did it go? They didn't understand that Jesus had been resurrected as part of the fulfillment of the scripture. That he must die, he must die, and then he will rise again. You would think that these two closest disciples, Peter and John, would, knew, would know that, right? Jesus did mention it to him at some point, but they didn't get it, didn't click on them right away. This is crucial. Peter and John might see and believe in all the physical evidence to affirm that Jesus is dead, but they didn't get it. They didn't understand that he had been risen. giving them the benefit of the doubt, quite possibly that they were too confused and traumatized, just like Mary. Even though they saw the evidence and proof pointing in the directions of Jesus' resurrection, Jesus did tell them that this was going to happen, didn't he? Both John and Peter left the empty tomb, confused and probably frightened. But that's not the case for Mary. This is the second part of the passage that we read today, verses 11 to 18. But John described Mary as the, the, the encounter of Mary with the two angels. John described her to seeing two angels dressed in white si sitting next to the, where the body of Jesus once laid, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to the woman, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And if you know, please tell me. 
And suddenly, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. She might have seen him, but she didn't recognize him. You know, how many of you have come across that? You've seen somebody, but you don't recognize that person. But you would think that Mary, Mary is very close to Jesus, that you would think that she would recognize Jesus right away. But that's not the case. See, here you have the three closest people of Jesus' life, Peter, John, and Mary. You know, all three of them didn't recognize Jesus right away. Until Jesus called out by her name, Mary. When somebody calls you by the name, you know something is up. Something is important. Somebody calls you by your full name, first name, last name, something serious. You know that person knows you right away. Then Mary immediately recognized his voice and responded back to him, saying, Rabboni! means teachers. Mary did not recognize it. It was the resurrected Christ until she heard his voice. Even after seeing him physically, Right before, his, uh, right before her eyes. Perhaps he was too disfigured from the beating and the crucifixion. Or perhaps Mary was too confused or, or her mind was something else, somewhere else, that she didn't recognize Jesus at all. I think the gospel writer is trying to tell us something here. That sometimes we may see things physically with our eyes, but we don't necessarily understand or believe what we are seeing. Or perhaps we refuse or refuse to accept what we see, refuse to accept the reality of what things are. It's a mind game. We see it, but we don't want to see it. We don't want to accept what we are seeing. Sometimes we get that. We refuse our mind say, no, that cannot be true. It's kind of like sometimes you stare in front of a TV and the TV is running, but you don't always get anything out of it. You stare at the the screen that is running, we refuse to pay attention, to listen to what we're trying to hear. We might hear, but we do not listen. We might see, but we do not understand. Similarly, when, we, when it comes to our spiritual journey of faith, we too may often hear, but do not listen. We may see and do not understand. Our minds may be too consumed by our other priorities, other issues and distractions in our lives, and we fail to, and we fail and neglected to see the evidence of God's happening in our lives. We fail to recognize God is still at work among us, even in a world that seems to be overwhelmed by our human sins and evil at times. Like the disciples, we might come physically to the empty tomb, but our minds and our motivation, our hearts were not there. We were somewhere else, too confused by something else, and we're missing everything of what, trying, what Jesus was trying to tell us. We're too focused, too self-absorbed of our own issues, our own problems, rather than allowing God to come to us and speak to us through our silent meditation and prayer. 
But perhaps we too are like going to the motion, going through the motion. Like the disciples who came to the empty tomb. Because they needed, they needed to find out. Everybody's running toward the tomb. So let's go. But only to go home empty handed. Empty, feeling empty, uninspired, unmotivated, and challenged. Because our mind refused to accept what we see and believe. In the Luke account of this resurrection story, it's a little, a little more descriptive. The two men carry the conversation with the woman, saying, <clears throat> Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, for he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must hand it over to the sinners hand it over to the sinners and be crucified. And on the third day, rise again. The two men's response invoked the memory of the women. All of a sudden, everything became clear as they remember what Jesus had told them before he died. The tears, their tears had turned into jubilant joy and their hope was transformed right before their eyes. Yes, even though Jesus' body was no longer there, the women knew that he was out and about, roaming and blending into our neighborhood. For he has risen from the dead, just as he had told them before. The woman ran as quickly as possible from the empty tomb back to where the disciples were, telling them that they, what they have found, saying, I have seen the Lord. Mary said, I have seen the Lord. That's, that's the very first public proclamation of Jesus' resurrection. I have seen the Lord. Based on this familiar stories of the resurrection, we can identify two types of faith. One is believing is seeing, and the converse, seeing is believing. Mary and the women believe in the resurrected Christ even though they did not or fully, they couldn't understand initially and see it happen before their eyes. They believe. On the other hand, Peter and the other disciples only believe after they have seen and ran to see it, the evidence themselves. They discredited the women's testimony and, and needed to see these tangible proofs, touch the linen, see the empty stool and the rock in order for them to believe. But they were disappointed. They went home empty-handed. The women trusted their gut instincts and their faith and their hearts without seeing all the evidence. Just the word. Just the word is good enough. As the resurrected Jesus said to the, just as Jesus said to the, the other doubting disciple, Thomas, I think that's the passage next week. When we, once again, he said, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. What about us? How often do we find ourselves believing without seeing? without seeing all the evidence and tangible proofs. None of us were there inside the empty tomb on the very first Resurrection Sunday. Yet we still believe. We believe because we were there 
We, were be, we believe not because we were there at the empty tomb or at the empty cross. We believe because we have trusted our instinct with the conviction of our hearts. We believe because we allow the Spirit to lead us by faith and not by sight. Furthermore, when we see the resurrected Christ at work among us, do we recognize and acknowledge Him for what He has done? Or are we too hesitant or too embarrassed to share our faith with others of what Christ has done in our lives? In the second passage that we read earlier from Acts, the Gospel writer Luke reminded us that we are chosen. We are chosen by God as God's witnesses for what God has done in our lives and to be the proclaimer of Christ's resurrection. We are witnesses not only because of what we see or hear, but what we experience and live. When Christ took his final breath upon the cross, his mission had completed. He had demonstrated himself to us and mandated us a new set of commandments that we ought to love one another just as Christ has loved us. And by this, everyone would know that we are his disciples if we love one another. That's the very least that we could do and to love one another. For God has illuminated us with numerous telltale signs of our faith. The empty tomb, the empty cross, the water of baptism, the bread that we break every, every time we celebrate communion, the cup that we drink. These are signs that remind us, invoke us of God's tangible presence among us, around us, and through us by the convictions of our faith. These tangible signs inspire us to persevere and journey on, no matter how difficult our journey of faith may, may be. So where have you seen the Lord today? Where will you see the Lord today? As you go from here, not only do we see the Lord here, but we see in the world that wherever God may be sending us to. We do not need to look far because Christ is alive, living among us, around us, and within us. Wherever we go, we bring the resurrected Christ wherever we go. Sometimes we just need to see and open our eyes to see the evidence and the presence of God to see things not from our human perspective, but from God's perspective. And to see the living Christ already at work among us and through us. Our hearts align with Christ today. Are we, are we like Peter and John and Mary, that we see things in our eyes but we refuse to believe? Do we see the resurrect, resurrected Christ through the same wavelength or the same frequency? Perhaps we might need to make some adjustment with our prescription in order to see things from a different perspective. 
that we may change a, a, a new mindset with a new attitude, a new perspective every time we come to seek God. So that not only do we see with our eyes, but we also believe in our hearts and experience the living Christ once again in our lives. Friends, as Easter people in this Good Friday world, we are a transform and renew and change people through the resurrected power and the hope in Jesus Christ, who lives among us and is alive and well every day and everywhere. So let us fix our eyes upon God's kingdom that is already here and that is to come. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now respond by singing hymn number 249. Because you live Oh Christ. Because you live, O oh Christ, the garden of the world has come to flower. The darkness of the tomb is flooded with your resurrection power. The stone has rolled away, and death cannot imprison. Oh, sing this Easter day, for Jesus Christ has risen, has risen, has risen, has risen. Because you live, O oh Christ, the spirit bird of hope is free for flying. Our cages of despair no longer keep us close and life denying. The stone has rolled away, and death cannot imprison. Oh, sing this is the day, for Jesus Christ has risen, has risen, has risen, has risen. Because you live, O oh Christ, the rainbow of your peace will spread creation. The colors of your love 
will draw him in kind to adoration. The stone has rolled away, and death cannot imprison. Oh, sing, this is the day, for Jesus Christ has risen, has risen, has risen, has risen. Amen. Please be seated. Now is the time that we will uh, have a moments of prayers and uh, are there any prayer of joys and thanksgiving that we need to lift up this morning? Uh, yes, Stephen? Yes, Car. Yeah, um, continuous prayer for my parents, Peggy, and also um, a prayer of thanks for my friend Eileen. Her surgery went well, but just pray that she continues to get better. Okay. Yes, Jeannie. Good to see uh, Elderly and and May with us. The, so, uh, we know Elderly has some eye issues and continue to pray for her. Um, how how are you doing? <laughs> uh, well, after this month of the year, I retired. Yeah. So yeah, I'm home and I'm bored, but uh, <laughs> I'm struggling with the eye. But uh, I Thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see, him, see you, May, as well. So continue to pray for the Lao family. Um, many of us attended the, the mother's funeral um, two weeks ago and continue to pray for the Lao family. Friends, let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Holy, resurrected God, we give you thanks this morning for your life and resurrection in our lives. For each morning we wake up and we, we give you thanks. We pray that you would continue to walk with us as we are challenged each morning, just as Mary Magdalene and the disciples ran to the tomb, that our faith may be invoke by your resurrection that each day that we not only be surprised but also be filled with great excitement that indeed you are risen that you continue to live in our life each day 
May we continue to be living in this resurrected hope in us. Even though in the world that oftentimes that seems grim and that we try our best to find hope. We're dealing with various issues of ourselves and we pray that you would be by our side. You know our prayers, you know our hearts. We lift it up to you, Lord. For indeed, you are indeed resurrected. You are alive in us. Lord, we lift up many of those whom whom we named earlier with various (coughs) concerns and issues. Some may be too personal to, to share, but we know that you hear our prayers. We lift up uh, Michael Houston uh, for, for, for his health issues and for Lise Taylor uh, for her uh, many issues that she has to confront as well and also for Rosie Weinstein as she recovers from her uh, stroke and also for Peggy and also for Eileen who is uh, also recovering from her health uh, surgery recently. And also for Nadine and Jeannie, uh, Jeannie's friends as well. Um, and we pray for those who are experiencing uh, physical health uh, challenges such as Ellery uh, with her eyes. And we pray that each day that not only physically that you will give her a vision clear, but we know that uh, you continue to speak to her in her heart. May she find comfort each day as she receives her treatment. And we also lift up uh, Joshua and other uh, fellow uh, officers of the NYPD as they each day they do their best to provide us with uh, the peace of mind as we walk the street, ride the subway. We pray that you would uh, keep them safe as they do their job. We pray for the families of, of those uh, officers who have recently tragically lost their lives for doing what they do best. Lord, in silence of our heart, you hear our prayer. We lift it up to you. And all this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just that. Just a little word. That this this picture was taken last week, but I think if you go out on your way out, you may take a, something similar picture. The flower is blooming right outside of the uh, the church's yard. So uh, it's a wonderful uh, day that we celebrate this morning. For the announcement, <clears throat> uh, for the offering, I invite you to please use the. Uh, Offering, ta- uh, offering plate in the back table on your way out, please, you may leave your offering that way as well. Uh, or you may continue to uh, make your offering online as well. Uh, for those who are elders, active elders on sessions right now, uh, we will have a very uh, short meeting. Uh, we'll gather up over here in the front row, so uh, maybe about 10 minutes, okay? So please gather here and we'll have a very short core session meeting for those who are elders. Um, continue a reminder that uh, please extend the courtesies of others by refraining from in- eating and drinking in our sanctuary and to minimize the usage of the bathroom right here in the front uh, to avoid any distractions of other uh, uh, out of fellow worshipers, so thanks for your cooperation. Our Wednesday evening Bible study will resume uh, 
We will continue the, the Lenten uh, devotional material that we've been using. Uh, it's not really uh, specifically dealing with Lent, the season of Lent, so we decided to continue on uh, until we find, uh, uh, we'll pick the new book uh, when we finish with the material. So, uh, so we will be meeting once again uh, this Wednesday by Zoom. Uh, you'll, get the e uh, you'll get the email uh, on Tuesday to remind you. I already mentioned about the, the short uh, call meeting, uh, so please come up here and we'll, we'll, we'll have that. Uh, our next regular stated session meeting will be next Monday, April the 8th at 7 p.m. Friends, let us conclude our worship this morning by singing two uh, 232, Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia. How triumphant, holy day, Alleluia. Who did once upon the cross, Suffer to redeem our loss. Alleluia. Hymns of praise and let us sing. Alleluia. Unto Christ our heavenly King. Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave? Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save. Alleluia. But the Pains which he endure, Alleluia. How salvation through, <coughs> Alleluia. Now above the sky he is king, Look, 
for the blessings that await for you this week. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who celebrate. And tell the story of hope that we have in the resurrected Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you not only on this day, but on days to come. And all of God's people say, Amen. Blessed week and be a blessing to others.